This is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and soon we will experience the light of the world, the overcoming of darkness, the fulfillment of life in the form of hope, peace, joy, and love. Our Advent wreath reminds us that in this past four weeks, we have been experiencing the manifestation of and the fulfillment of those four qualities of God which gave birth to Christ. Each week, we lit one additional candle, symbolizing the birth and acceptance of that quality into our world and acceptance into our lives. I'm talking about hope peace, joy, and love. For many of us, it was not a conscious thing to the acceptance of those four qualities, but a sort of infiltration of the Spirit in our lives each week. We opened our hearts and shared our thoughts and dreams. We sat in the cafe and ate pastries, drank coffee and tea, allowing God's Spirit of joy to flow. And now, once again, we await the coming of Christ <coughs> so that we, too, may be delivered from darkness on Christmas Day. But how shall we be delivered? Through what vehicle does deliverance come? Well, the story of Gabriel, Mary, and Joseph is more a story about God's faithfulness and favor upon his children than anything else. It is a story not only about the blessed Mary and Joseph, but it is also a story about us and our acceptance of God's favor. Every morning at work, we come together and about 12 of us meet to discuss important things about our clients. But before we get into the business of the day, we have a quick check-in to see how each of us is doing. And the way that we do this is by using two or three adjectives to describe how we're feeling. You know, things like, well, I'm tired today, but relieved and hopeful. But at this last meeting, during this Advent season, someone said, I feel blessed and highly favored. And somebody else said, go Mary. <laughs> we all laughed because we understood what that meant. There must have been a few Christians sitting in the room that day because not only did they understand the story of Mary, but they understood the concept of favor in their lives. Blessed and highly favored, a spiritual kind of favor. Does everybody know what it means when we say favor? It means you are given something you don't have to work for. You don't have to qualify for it, interview for it, or fill out any papers to get it. It's just given to you. They call it God's favor. The Spirit speaks, and a blessing of favor falls upon you and all that you spiritually touch. It's called blessed and highly favored. It's a different kind from the other kind of favor that we might get from a friend or a parent or even a co-worker. It's the kind that flows from loving, saving, redeeming heart of God, and it changes lives. That's why the coming of the Messiah, Mary's favor, was so important because it was expected to change lives. And here we are, 2,000 plus years later, and we can see that lives 
have been changed. You know, when Mary was approached by Gabriel, she was probably only around 12 or 13 years of age. Because marriage for young women at that time was about from age 10 to 12 years old. You know, she was just beginning to come into womanhood. Therefore, she was lacking in the skills needed for the job in which she had been given. Yet God gave it to her anyway. That goes to show that even when we think we are not prepared or don't qualify for the appointed task before us, God says differently. As the days steadily progress towards 2024, I ask you to think about what favor has God given you during this year that you are still wrestling with? Are you wrestling with it because, like Mary, you can't understand how it could be possible? Or perhaps like Joseph, who worried about how others would react. Yet his love and acceptance of Mary helped bring about great things, and your love and acceptance of the favor that God pours on your heart will help bring about great things. You know, it's interesting because we don't hear much about Joseph. Yet it was through Joseph we see the manifestation of how those four qualities of God, hope, peace, joy, and love, brought forth the light of God. It was he and Mary's acceptance of the favor laid upon them which opened the doors for the expression of life in its truest form, union with God the Father. For on that night, a Savior was born. Emmanuel, God is with us. So too, with the acceptance of every favor laid upon us, the light of the Savior is not only born, but shared even in the midst of chaos. I want to tell you a quick story which kind of explains that concept, and then I'll bring this to a close. Many years ago, little three-year-old Isaiah and his uncles and grandparents went on a plane ride to Italy. When they landed in Germany, they had a three-hour delay. So little Isaiah and his uncles went ahead to the gate for the next plane to board, while his elderly grandparents waited for the electric cart to transport them. When Isaiah and his uncles arrived at the gate, he was so happy because no one was there and he had the run of the place all to himself. So they sat near the door where they would enter the plane and they held two seats for the grandparents who were delayed because they had not yet arrived. Along came a college hockey team and their coach, who was insistent on having his players sit in the two safe seats. As you can imagine, the situation turned tense. When the coach told the team members to move the bags out of those safe seats and go ahead and sit there anyway. But God's favor fell upon little Isaiah who in the heat of the words walked over to one of the hockey players and asked, what's your name? He wanted to know what his name was. He said, I'm Isaiah. Are you going to my uncle's house too? Everything changed at that moment. Within minutes, the situation lost steam and every hockey player had Isaiah with his little red sports coat on and his little bow tie sitting on their laps, talking with him. 
We wondered where Isaiah was, and every time we looked, he was over here, and then he was over here, and then he was over here. Smiling, laughing with the hockey players. They kept them on their laps until we boarded the plane, ignoring the gestures of their coach. The grandparents later arrived and sat in those saved seats. You know, God's favor often comes through the innocence of a child. Now, as we look upon those lights of the Advent wreath and prepare to bring this season to a close, let us remember the stories of Mary and Joseph and little Isaiah and enjoy every moment of being blessed and highly favored as we too await the coming of the Messiah. Amen.